All right. Good afternoon, students. This is a video over homework number 13, uh, volume and surface area. Find the volume at each figure. Very, very good. Um, by the way, I want you on every single problem to make sure you're writing down the formula and putting the numbers in the formula for every single problem. However, uh, you may leave it unreduced, right, since you do not have to, since you don't have uh, um, a calculator, right? And let's get started. So, very first problem. Let's make these a lot bigger. My fault. Should I have this ready? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Uh, looking at the very first one. Actually, I need to make it a lot bigger. Okay. Sorry, I didn't have that ready. All right. Starting off with uh, number one here. Number one, we're looking at a sphere. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. Sphere. All right. And instructions are, I believe, to find the volume. I don't know. I kind of deleted instructions. Yeah, it's volume. Um, to find the volume of it, right? So we are to find the volume of this very first problem, which is very easy. You look at your formula chart, which is provided on the back page, and it'll tell you that the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. It's very, very easy. And it tells you right there, blatantly, what the radius is. The radius is 5.6. So I'm going to just write 4 over 3 pi times 5.6 cubed. Very good. And as soon as you have that, that's honestly all you need. Since you don't have a calculator at home as you're watching this, that's understandable that you don't have a calculator to type this into, and that's okay. Right? If you had a calculator, I'm sure you could easily do it. Anyone could type buttons into a calculator. But it's a lot more difficult to know which formula to use and what numbers go into that formula. So this is your final answer right here. Very good. And that's okay to leave it like that. If you get the answer, you have a calculator, that's all by means. Go ahead. Either way, you will be awarded credit. Um, now, number two is just like number one. So if you wish to pause it and do that, you can. I'll wait or whatever. Um, let's look at number three. Number three. I want to find volume of this cone. And that right there is, if I remember correctly, one-third big B times H, right? Now, that big B stands for area of the base, right? This stands for area of the base, right? Which, if you look closely, it's a cone. The cone has a base of a circle, right? That's my, uh, that's my base right there, and I need to figure out the area of it. Well, if I want to figure out the area of that, I'm going to use the formula pi r squared. That right there is the formula for area of any circle, right? It has a radius of 4, right? So I'm just going to put down in my formula now that it's pi 4 squared. Now, once again, since you don't have a calculator, that's okay. I'm just going to grab this guy and stick it right in there. So I'm going to say now one-third times, instead of big B, I can now write my pi 4 squared. So it's whatever pi 4 squared is. That is my big B. That's my area of the base, right? Now, last part, multiply by the height. The height of this cone, since it is sideways, is actually 9. I know some people think it's 4. It's not. It's 9. The cone itself is actually being set up sideways. If you look at it closely right now, here's your cone. Jeez. And there you go. It's sideways. See, so the height is actually uh, 9 right here. It's this length going up and down. Very, very good. So you just have to kind of tilt your paper, then you'll see it a lot bigger. So times... 9, and that's your final answer. You type that in your calculator, you get your answer. Very, very good. All right, see, the hardest part about this is setting it up, especially this part, right? How to figure out the area of the base. You know, the area of the base um, is uh, pi r squared because it was a circle, and then we just put it right in there. Very good. All right, let's move on to number 5, unless you want to do 4. Just pause it and do it, you know. Number five is a cylinder. Now, a cylinder uses the following formula for volume. Ah, big B times H. Big B stands for area of the base. So once again, I look at my base. My base is this circle, right? I need to figure out the area of this circle. Well, to find area of a circle, we do pi r squared. Pi r squared will tell us the area of the circle. Pi, and it looks like we got a radius of 10, so I'm going to say 10 squared. 
I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm just going to bring it and put it in where Big B goes. So I'm going to grab it, put it right here. And my Big B is pi 10 squared. And my height is, ah, that's easy. My height is 7. Yeah, easy. And there's our answer. Very nice, very nice. Easy problem. Look at that. Easy, easy. Moving on to number seven, you could pause and go to number six, which is just like that same problem. Get a, yourself a little practice. All right, here's number seven. Now, number seven is not a prism or a cylinder or a sphere or anything like that. It's actually, in fact, a pyramid. And pyramids follow a whole nother formula. Let me see here. Uh, one third big B times H. All right, one third big B times H. So in this problem, I'm going to say that this is my base, right? This nice rectangle on the bottom here. And I need to figure out the area of it. Well, that's pretty easy. Ever since uh, elementary school, we've been taught that, you know, you see a rectangle, they give you two sides, they tell you, like, this is 6 and this is 12, right? Uh, find the uh, length of it. Well, I'm not getting perimeter. You don't add them all up. That's perimeter. For area, you multiply these two, right? It's length times width or base times height, right? 12 times 6. That gives you the area of a rectangle. 12 times 6? Yep. I'll be honest. I don't know my 12s. <laughs> uh, hold on. I can do this. Let me see. 12 times 5 is uh, 60. So 12 times 6? Ah, it's 72. Very good. So I'm going to say 1 third, right, of 12 times 6. And you can write 12 times 6 in here, or you could just uh, write uh, 72. Very good. That is the area of the base. The base was a rectangle, right, which is 72. And the height of the shape. The height, 11. Too easy. Very easy. And there's your final answer. You type that in the calculator, punch, punch, punch. You'll get your final answer. Very good. Uh, by the way, once again, you don't have to type, of course. You don't have your calculator with you, unless you are here at school doing it. But most of you are, if you're watching this, you're most likely at home. Nice and tidy. Comfortable, hopefully. All right. Make it slight and big. I want my students to be able to see it. All right. Moving on to the next problem. Number nine, find the volume of this prism. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just assume that the base of this shape is this one in the back. Honestly, and I'll be honest, you could have picked any base, any side, and you still would be right. Any side could be the base. But I'm just going to pick where those right angles are. Those, those right angles... If you ask me, there's a dead giveaway to telling me, hey, use this one. So I'm like, okay, sure, I will, you know. So just use that one. You'll be fine. All right, so that has a base, and it's really hard to see. Somebody's going to grab that and drag it out. Um, that looks like the following sides. Let's see here. If this is 3, then that means this side right here is 3. This length is uh, 5, which means that length over there is 5, which means this length is 5. Very good. I just want to bring it out there because I know I'm going to need it. Now, this is a prism. Prism follows the formula. Volume is equal to big B times H, right? Big B times H, where big B stands for area of the base. Well, that's pretty simple. Here is my base right now, right? I have 5. I got 3. 5 times 3 is an area of 15. So that's my area of the base. My area of the base is 15 multiplied by the height. Now, if this is the bottom right here, if this is your bottom, whoops, actually I was meant to grab the blue. There you go. If this is the bottom, right, then the height to go from this one to the next one, right, we've got two bases here. The height between these two rectangles here is that number two right here. The two is the stilts that basically get us to go from one uh, base to the other base. That's your height right there. That's how tall it is. It's two meters tall. So our height is two. Pretty hard to see through those problems. That's why I saved the hardest ones for the last one of each category. All right, let's move on to surface area. Surface area, or you could pause it and do the problem number 10, either way. I'm going. Nope, not volume anymore. We're doing total surface area. Total surface area uh, for a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared. Right? So I'm just going to write in here now, since the radius is simply just 10.1, 4 pi 10.1 squared, and that's it. That's your answer. Congrats. That was easy. 
Really, really simple. Number 12, same exact thing. You can pause it, do that one, or keep on going. Surface area for number 13. We're looking at a cone now. A cone follows a very unique formula. It's pi r l plus, plus pi r squared. Now, I like this L right here. We know what R stands for. R stands for radius, but this L, I like to think of it not as length, but instead I like to call that the L stands for uh, slanted height, you know, because it's kind of like uh, height, but except slanted, you know, and that's what this cone is doing right now. This cone has a slanted height of 12.4, not a direct height, not an actual direct height of 12.24. Uh, no, it actually has a slanted height of 12.4. Okay, so let's go ahead and put these numbers in. We got pi, we have r, our radius is simply just 3, that was easy, 3, right? Our l is 12.4, I'm going to write 12.4 plus pi r squared. Now our radius again was 3, so I'm just going to plug it right back in there, 3, Squared. You type that in your calculator, you'll get yourself an answer. Anyone could do that, but only you could write a formula. Only you could put those numbers into the formula. Not a machine, just you. Very good. Moving on. All right, last four problems. Make that a little longer. Extend page. Much bigger. Extend page. Bigger. That's good. Okay. Number 15. Let's take a look here. Uh, number 15 is a cylinder, and I want to find the surface area of it. Surface area formula tells me 2 pi r h, right? This is total surface area. 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in there. Surface area is equal to 2 pi radius. This is a really simple problem. Um, radius, which is 12, so I'll put 12 in there. Um, h, which is the 8, very good, and it's really easy, plus 2 pi radius, right, my radius, once again, is 12, Let's just put 12 in there, squared, and that should be your final answer, you type that exact whole thing in your calculator, get your answer right away, easy, 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 all right, all right, moving on, number 7, Number seven, we're looking at a prism, right? A rectangular prism at that, right? Um, let me write down its formula first before we keep going. Rectangular prism formula is S is equal to PH plus 2 times big B. Oh, hint, hint, by the way. This is the second problem in your quiz, by the way. It is exactly the second problem in your quiz. It, it has different numbers. But I'm going to give you a pr uh, prism just like this where you have to use the formula uh, just like this one as well. So that's uh, exactly what you're going to see in a little bit too. Okay. All right. Moving on. Let's get this done. First thing I want to do, outline the base. I know I'm going to need it. All right. Outline my base. That's my base right there, right? Now that P right there stands for perimeter of the base, right? Perimeter of the base. Right? I want to figure out what is the perimeter of this base. Well, if this is my base right now, I need to see it has links of, well, this right here is 7. Right? This right here is 7. So this is 7. Um, this length is, well, this is 4, so this must be 4. Right? So I got 4, 7. This should also be then 4. This would also be 7. So what is 4 plus 7 plus 4 plus 7? I don't know. Let's see here. 4 plus 7, 7 is 14. 14 plus 4, mm, 18 plus 4 again. 22, I hope. 22 is the perimeter. Multiplied by the height. H just stands simply for height, right? Now, if this is the, uh, oh, stay there. There you go. If this is your base, and this is the top base, right? You've got a bottom base. See it? And a top base. Then the height of this whole figure is these stilts right here. As you can see, the height then has to be a length of 3, right? The height is 3, plus 2 times the area of the base. The area of this uh, shape right here is 4 times 7. 4 times 7, 
28. Don't get the uh, perimeter and the area of the base mixed up. Big P stands for perimeter of the base. Uh, big B stands for area of the base. Big difference there, area of the base. Very good, which happens to be 28. Very, very nice. Uh, last but not least, you just simply type all that up. You get an answer, or you could just write this down. Either way. Okay. 19 is a rectangular pyramid. Uh, this is surface area, so I'm just going to write, oh, snap, I just noticed uh, that is 9.5 and 9.2. Now, you probably don't understand what I'm saying, but yeah, this is an evil problem. I didn't notice I put it in there, so sorry, my mistake. I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm just going to get everyone credit. Good job, everyone got uh, credit for that one, 100%. Uh, just for this question, though, not anything else. All right, my fault. Uh, you get to do it, my fault. I didn't notice it was a bad question. My fault. Oh, well. Um, moving on. Number 21. 21 is a triangular uh, prism. This is a good problem, a very tough one, but it is a good problem. It is a prism because it has two bases. We have one base right here in the front. It's a triangle. Another base that's right here in the back. See that? So we have two bases right there. It is a prism for sure. No doubt about that. All right? And in this one, I'm first going to write down the formula of the prism, which is surface area is equal to pH plus 2 big B. All right? The first thing I want to do is find out the perimeter of the base. What is the perimeter of this base? Well, the base is currently a triangle. Right? So I'm just going to grab one of these triangles, put it to the side, and take a look at it. It has lengths of, well, this is 3, thus this is 3. This length right here is, well, let's look at it. If this length is 4, then this length has to be 4. Once again, if this length is 4, this length should be 4. So I'm going to put 4 right here. And the bottom length, that's easy, it's 5. So this is 5. Now I can get the perimeter. Add up all the sides. What is a 5 plus 4 plus 3? 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 plus 3, 12. Now time for the height. Now when I say height, they mean height of the entire figure. They don't mean height to the triangle. They mean height of the entire figure. So how do I get from this base, right, to this base? Right? How is it, what's the distance from this space to this base? How far are they apart? They are this far apart. Four miles apart. Because MI stands for miles, right? Those are the stilts. That's how far they are from one from another. It is exactly four miles away. All right, plus two times the area of the base. Now, if you look at this base right here, right, these are the sides. We've got three, four, and five, right? And by the way, there's a right angle right here. I need to get the area of it. And that's not so simple as it sounds. In fact, finding the area of a triangle has always been a little tricky for some students. It's one half base times height. That's how you figure out the area of any triangle. The only problem is the way a triangle is set up right now, you can't tell what's the base, what's the height. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you look at the right angle, that right angle will tell you exactly what's the base and what's the height. The base is 4, right? So what would be the height? Would it be 5? Would it be 3? I don't know. You tell me. Um, in fact, it actually is going to have to be the following numbers. Let me just grab this capture tool. It would have to be, let's see here. Mm, actually, let me just, yeah, yeah, let me guess who it is. Okay, so here's my base. If that's my base, right? Let me try this again. Let me grab my, another one, uh, magic pen. Okay, so if this is my base right here, then this is my height, right? Pretty simple, right? If this is my base, then this is my height. That's exactly the way it should be. Wow, I don't know why I did that. That's crazy. Uh, get down there, right? Or I could have looked at it a different direction. I also could have looked at it like this, where this side is my base, right? I could look at it where this side is my base, and I could have said this side is my height, right? So I can say this side's my base and this side's my height. Notice how the longest side, the hypotenuse, is never used. This 5 is never needed. All you ever need is this side of 3, this side of 4. It's kind of weird to see the 3 and the 4 sideways, but it is. Uh, 3 and 4 are the only two I need. Those are my base and heights. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say in here, 1 half, 3 times 4. Right? Uh, 1 half of 3 times 4. Right? So I could literally put that in there if I want. 1 half of 3 times 
4. Honestly, by the way, 1 half of 3 times 4 is uh, 12. So you know, because 3 times 4 is 12. No, no, and half of 12 is, ooh, 6. Half of 12 is 6. Nice. Okay, move this out of the way. Out of the way. And there is our final answer. So if you put this whole thing in... <laughs> And your problem, that would be it. Put in your calculator, type, type, type. You get exactly what the answer is right there. It's 12 times 4 plus 2 times 6. Very good. All right, guys. Hope this was helpful. You all have a good night. I took way too long on this one. As I see, it's been 20 minutes exactly. Have a good one, guys. Hope you enjoy.